Good evening, everyone. Once again, we are so glad you could join us here at the Great High Street Missionary Baptist Church Wednesday evening Bible study. Uh, we are just delighted that uh, uh, that you're sharing with us, uh, our members locally, uh, as uh, well as our members across the country, our friends and well wishers uh, over the nation. Uh, God bless you, and uh, we just trust you've had a blessed and safe day. Uh, and uh, we were just uh, so excited to be back with you. Uh, we are in uh, Ephesians, those who are just joining us, and we ask that you just contact your friends, share uh, with others that they may come and, and walk with us in the Word of God. Uh, what a journey it has been and continues to be. Thank you so much, uh, particularly for those who have been uh, with us across the years in, in our study. And so this is our systematic study uh, as we walk through the Word of God. And we are in Galatians, the third chapter, and I'm sure we'll be able to finish this tonight. Uh, uh, through, uh, we will begin our, our study tonight at that 14th verse and conclude at the end of the chapter. As you well know, that uh, as we've st been studying uh, uh, in this book of Ephesians, uh, we are dealing with uh, Paul's priceless letter uh, to the Ephesians, but also to the churches of the church age and throughout uh, the generations. Let us have a word of prayer, and then we'll go forward uh, with our study tonight. God, our Father, we thank you for this time of sharing, and as we walk through the word, oh God, that uh, we uh, pray that we will continue to uh, be doers of your word, and not just hearers and learners only. Holy Spirit, we just thank you so much uh, for empowering us and for indwelling us and allowing us to walk uh, this road uh, together. Thank you so much. Uh, as being our paraclete, the one who goes alongside. Bless us now as we go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Uh, e Ephesians, as you know, uh, Paul is dealing with uh, the wealth of the believer in this book, the wealth of the believer. Uh, how are you going to know whether or not you're wealthy or not if you don't study the word that is in the spirit of God? So it's, we are dealing with the wealth of the believer, uh, the walk of the believer, the warfare of the believer, and the worship of the believer. And of course, there are a number of ways that uh, this book is outlined. Uh, and, uh, and we're coming to basically uh, to uh, the end of this two-part uh, book of, of uh, Ephesians. Because the first part deals with doctrine, and the second part deals with duty. As you well know, that you have to get your doctrine straight in order to have the proper duty. Other words, belief, behavior, behavior, and belief. You have to have the belief together first before your behavior can be lined up with the Word of God. And so uh, this is where we are uh, tonight. We're starting with this 14th verse and it deals with uh, for this cause what cause is he talking about he's talking about the doctrine he's talking about the believers blessings in Christ the believers blessings in Christ and also the believers possession in Christ how do you know uh, unless you are in the word of God uh, how wealthy we are spiritually it's uh, tantamount to uh, the, uh, in the, during the Great Depression, there was a man whose name was uh, Yates. Mr. Yates, he owned uh, quite a bit of property in Texas, and he raised sheep uh, in Texas. And uh, during the Depression, he was about to become financially ruined and really on the brink of bankruptcy when uh, uh, the, an oil company came to his farm and asked them to permit them to drill. And he didn't have anything else to lose. So he said, go ahead on and drill. Uh, and he gave them permission. Uh, and so what happened, soon as they started drilling, the workmen, uh, based on, they hadn't gotten that ball involved. It was a shallow, in the shallow depth. The workmen struck the largest oil deposit that had been discovered at that time 
on the North American continent. And overnight, he became a billionaire. Overnight. And the amazing thing is, though, uh, it, he had, the untapped riches were already there. He just didn't know it. And so are we. We are spiritually Mr. Yates. We are spiritually rich and wealthy. But you have to know how wealthy you are in Christ Jesus. So when Paul wrote this letter uh, to the Ephesian church, it revealed the hidden treasures, the hidden riches that we have in Christ Jesus. They were unsearchable riches in Christ Jesus. And so uh, what Paul is doing now, he's uh, not only he's preaching, but he also praying that believers, that us as believers might recognize and use that spiritual wealth that they would be strengthened within and established in love through the power of prayer and then filled with God's precious Holy Spirit. And so this is where, where we are. So why do we live? Why the question is, why do we live as paupers? Why should we live as paupers uh, when riches we possess? We have become joint heirs with Christ Jesus with blessing measureless. With blessings measureless. And so when we look at, at that, this first uh, verse, for this cause, Paul, who we are talking about, for this cause, the wealth that we have in the believer, uh, the warfare, the worship that we have in the believer, uh, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is his prayer now. This is his prayer for enlightenment. This is his prayer for power. For what cause? It was to bow down his knees to the Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Was this the whole family uh, of the believers of God? The believers, the past and the present. The past and the present. And then, now he says, I bow down on my knees. Oh, this deals with the posture of prayer. And it is, Paul is not saying that uh, when we, the knees, many times uh, we bow standing up, driving down the road, or sitting at the table on the side of the bed. Some can't get down on their knees. Some of the older ones, um, maybe younger ones who, who possess knee problems, say, if I get down on my knee, who going to get me up? And too often that is said. So it's the posture. It is what posture is your heart in that you bow. He's more concerned about the posture of your heart than he is about the posture of your body. Because you can get down on your knees in that physical posture, but you're not bowed in your heart. And so of what value is it at that point? Uh, but it is about the, the power. And of course, that is uh, uh, many of us bow on our knees. It's certainly a, a sign of, of submission to be sure. And so when we look at that 15th verse, uh, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. The whole family in heaven and earth is named. What family now is are we talking about? You remember that the, the distinction had been wiped out as it relates to the Jews and Gentiles and Protestants and Catholics, black and white, red and brown and polka dot. When we come to Jesus Christ in faith, we are one body. There are no denominational issues in him. Sure, we have separate administrations many times, different administrations, but we come together, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism in Christ. And so man make the distinctions with denominations, but that's not what he's talking about here. All of those distinctions have been wiped away when Jesus Christ came. And we to know that in the Old Testament said nothing, the prophets of the Old Testament said nothing about churches. Churches, churches were not established in the Old Testament. Nothing was said about churches in the Old Testament. But the Old New Testament 
That's part of the mystery that we have in Christ. It's the mystery of the church. It's the majesty of the church. It's the message of the church through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who established the church in this new age, this dispensation, this we're in the, in the dispensation of grace in this period uh, of, of grace that we're in now, that was ushered in by the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so we are one family now. And then when we're all in one family, then we are heirs. We share together uh, in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ because before that time, the Gentiles were alien to the commonwealth of Israel. They were not a part of the body. But as a result now, and they, they were promised they're not apply. But now what Jesus has done, he has torn down those petitions that separated us. And now we can come to him in essence as one family in the body of Christ. And then when we look at, at, at verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. This is strength, power within by God's spirit. They are, uh, there's a, uh, a story was told, well, actually, uh, an actual situation where a large company uh, was uh, in the extracting of contamination from steel uh, drums by a suction out of the out of the drum, large steel drum, and uh, it it was done through powerful pumps. It would draw the material out of the barrels, draw the material out of the barrels, and so the workers had to be very careful uh, to regulate the force from the pumps because if they uh, take out too much air, too much air out of the drum, the drum would collapse like a paper cup, collapse like a paper cup because the outward pressure, the outward pressure would exceed the pressure on the inside and cause the outside would cause the inside to crumble just like a paper cup. And so as a result, uh, when we have to be strengthened on the inward man, that spirit, we are three-dimensional being, spirit, soul, and body. Soul, we're self-conscious. Spirit, we're God-conscious. And then the body, we are world-conscious. Sometimes we can let the world outside crush the inward man. But through trials and tribulations, and but God, uh, through the Holy Spirit, strengthens in the power of Jesus' name, strengthens the inside, strengthens the inside, though, so that we can withstand the storms of life, the trials of life, the vicissitudes of life, the issues of life, things that will become upon us. And so he worked to strengthen and renew us, renew our minds as we read God's word, as we pray, as we study God's word. And if we neglect the scripture, if we neglect the word of God, seldom talk to the Lord, suddenly have a relationship with him, Seldom have fellowship with our sisters or our brothers. Uh, if we fail to grow, grow strong in him, then we become weak and we become vulnerable. And then we will, won't be able to withstand the outside pressures, the temptations and the problems and the troubles of life. So that's why we ask the Lord to develop our inner strength. Develop us, Lord. Strengthen us. So that that's why we're studying tonight. So that he can strengthen our inward man that makes the difference. Because our outward man, oh, it just depreciates and devalues on a daily basis. But then the inward man, as we study, then the inward man will grow day by day. And so we ask the Lord to develop our inner strength. Uh, so when light blows uh, come upon us and the burdens uh, press us down, and we'll be able to stand. Oh, and then we'll be able to pray the prayer. Help us, O oh Lord, when trouble comes, to trust your word 
and not to succumb and help us not to turn aside, but in your strength, in, your, in the power of your might, that we can abide and we can stand the storm. God bless. And so when we look at verse 17, uh, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love. By faith, we want him to come into our hearts. We want our hearts to be receptive to, uh, the, to the presence of God. We want him to come and be a guest, not just uh, in the, uh, you know, in, in the, the, the Greek, we have uh, a definition uh, as a guest that will come and then would leave. But then the definition that he's talking about, yes, to come and abide with us, a permanent indwelling, to take a residence in us. And he can't dwell in an unclean temple. If your house is filthy with uh, lust and, and jealous and covetousness and all type of sin, then he will not dwell. We will grieve the Holy Spirit. We will grieve him and we must be careful that we don't want to grieve him. And so then, for Christ to rule and reign within us by faith, by faith, then uh, we're rooted and grounded. It's like unto a tree that's planted, and you water it, and it takes root, and it's grounded, because the tree itself can't be any stronger than the root of the tree. When the tree, you water it and you nurture it, that it will go down in the soil so that when the wind and rain and the storm come, it may bend, but it won't break. It will stand back up when the storms of life come, when we're rooted and grounded in the word of God. This is what he is saying. Then you will be able to stand the storm. And then uh, we can have uh, that. Because faith is, is our power of appro appropriation, the power of appropriation. That is, the pity is that we are so slow uh, to make use of our Lord's resources. He does not force himself upon us, to be sure. He does not force himself upon us. Though he brings with him gold that has been tried by the fire, that we may be enriched with white raiments for our clothing, and I said for our blindness, and though he knows how urgently we need these things, uh, but he will not force them upon us. He will not force uh, us to accept. He will not force acceptance upon us. Rather, he stands at the door and knock, just like a traveling merchant with his wares, standing there at the door, knocking and knocking at the door of your heart. And he who has the wares that, that is, is there free, all you have to do is just open the door and let him in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Revelation. And if any man will open up, then I'll come in and sup with him and he with me. You open up, I'll come in, and I will be the host. And you can be the guest. That's what he is doing. And so all we have to do is receive this gift that he had to offer without price, without money, without cost. Just a submitted life. That's what he wants. That's what he wants from us, my sisters and brothers. And so uh, what, what we, he's, it's a request for love. It's a request for understanding, a full understanding of spiritual things. 18 may be able to comprehend comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length the depth and the width. Incomprehensible. <laughs> Incomprehensible. How can we comprehend? How can we even approach uh, comprehending this, this great power that he has, his, his wealth uh, in us? It's just uh, uh, it, it's just incomprehensible. It has been said that God's love is wider than space, longer than eternity, deeper than hell, higher than heaven, and how can we ever comprehend it? His love is so vast, 
so inclusive, so fulfilling, so satisfying, so wonderful, so compassionate, so glorious, so forgiving, and we are so undeserving. But it's the love of God. God does indeed love the saints. He loves us, and he continued to prove it with his amazing grace. He loved us when, when even when we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. He even died for us while we were yet sinners. While we were enemies of his, he died for us. And we were so vile and we were so vulgar. He did not like our love, our ways, but he loved us. We were carnal and corrupt, evil and envious, wretch undone, no more than a filthy rag. But what did he do? He died for us. Arrogant. We have the nerve to be arrogant and abusive. Really? And we are nothing. And we have we are cruel to one another, say mean things to one another, so callous with one another. And we grieve the Holy Spirit. He wants to come and live within us. He wants to come and live within us. And we're so deceitful and so devilish as it relates to one another. We have to make our heart receptive to his presence. To the Holy Spirit. We don't want to grieve him. The Holy Spirit. We don't want to grieve him. We want Jesus to come and live into our, in our heart. And sometimes our behavior has been so disgraceful and so dishonest. But he wants to live within us. And so that is why his love supersedes all human knowledge and understanding. It surpasses all human knowledge and understanding. How amazing. How amazing. And so, if we want him to feel us, what do we have to do? Glad you asked. We must empty ourselves so that we can be filled with him. We can't coexist. We must empty ourselves so that we can be filled with him. So the only way a person can be filled with God is to be empty of everything else. Empty of sin empty of selfishness, empty of jealousy, empty of vain, empty of, of doubt, empty of foolishness, empty of greed, pride and arrogance. And if we will but provide the empty, you can assure that God will fill it. That's what we have to do if we are going to uh, uh, make ready for his filling us. That's what we must do. Praise God. And so, in verse, uh, verse 20, Now unto him that is able, who is able, a good reading, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Come. This is the encouragement to pray and trust God for the answer. Not our will, because our will should be lost in his. Trust him for the answer. Because too often, we want our will to prevail, but we want, he knows the way. He knows the way. And so what we are to, to trust him. And when we trust him, then uh, he will give us uh, it, it, will, it, is, it was more than we can ask or think according to that power, the faith that worked in us. Story is told of a man who lived uh, far out in the country and he uh, bought his clothing uh, from um, the mail order catalog. You all remember how we used to do order from Sears Roebuck and, and I think uh, J.C. Penney's uh, order from other vendors. And uh, at the bottom of the of the printed order, when he was ordering clothes from the mail order company, uh, uh, he noticed the statement that said at the uh, at the end of this of the order form, if we do not have the article you ordered in stock, may we substitute. This is the mail order catalog company. Now. He ordered his things through mail order. At the bottom of it. 
at this little uh, statement, if we do not have in stock what you order, may we substitute? And of course, he said, yes. He wrote yes, first time uh, that he wrote, he said, wrote yes. Uh, and then they sent him something that was worth twice as much as the article that he had requested were twice as much because he said yes. And so the company explained that uh, we are sorry we do not have the article in stock which you ordered. We are sending you something better at our expense. We are sending you something better. You ordered one thing, we didn't have it in stock, but what we are going to do, we're going to send you something better at our expense. You don't have to pay anything extra. And so after that, the man, uh, whenever he placed an order going forward, he put yes at the bottom of the order form. Yes at that bottom. Because he knew he would not be disappointed by the substitution. And that's what we do when we pray to God. We uh, And he blesses us oftentimes greater above everything that we're able to ask or think. You ask for one thing, and he knows what we need, and he will, He has a better plan. He will give us something better, something better, always something better. So we too, we when we pray to God, it's good to tell him what we are, are willing to let him uh, take for us, for our weak prayers, for our weak prayers. Oftentimes, he will do even over and beyond. Because too often we pray and we do not see our request answered because we pray amiss, selfishly. We pray amiss sometimes. So instead, we need to examine the motives of our prayer, the motives of our hearts, and trust him to give us exactly what we need. Glory to God. We can be sure that when we do his will, he will send us something far better because his plan is always better than ours. Yes, exceedingly abundantly above all that we're able to ask or think. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness that he will do it. He will do it. So if we trust the Lord to do good for me, this is what we need to pray. I trust the Lord to do good for me. Whatever he deems best, I know what I mean, but whatever he deems best, I know his answer will exceed my hope and my request because he will do best. And so what we ought to understand that God's answers are often wiser than our prayers. God's answers are oftentimes wiser than our prayers. Because he is God. He is God. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 tells us that his ways are above our ways and our, his thoughts above our thoughts. As high as the east is from the west. That's how God is, uh, blesses us. So God's answers are often uh, wiser than our prayers. And so on that uh, 21st verse, under him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. What a prayer. What a prayer that, that he is that he is praying. And I leave you tonight uh, with uh, as we close out as we uh, uh, move into uh, chapter four. Chapter four. We ought to have faith. We ought to have faith. And let me tell you this little story as we prepare to leave. Uh, we, have, have, we have to believe because without faith it's impossible to please God. And he that cometh to him must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. So sometimes we pray unbelieving prayers. Stories told as I leave, uh, the story is told about a church in a small town, a church in a small town uh, had it going on. Everything was just going well for this church. Uh, uh, it was there was no gambling going on, no casino going on in this in this little town. No had no liquor stores, no juke joints, 
no beer joints, I mean, every, it, in the entire area. So after several years, after several years, uh, a nightclub was built right on Main Street. A nightclub right on Main Street, and that just blew everybody's mind. And so the congregation uh, and the churches came together in a little convention of sort and just prayed. They prayed, uh, they were so disturbed, they prayed that uh, God <laughs> had even had all night, all night prayer meeting, that God would uh, burn the tavern down, uh, send some storm or another, burn the tavern down, uh, the nightclub down. And so sometimes, some days after that, uh, a storm did come, blew the tavern down, and, uh, and tore it up to shunder. And so the man who owner of the tavern, the joint, hired a lawyer to file a lawsuit for damages because he believed that the prayers that they prayed to God tore down his tavern, his nightclub. And so the church hired a lawyer as well to defend, to defend his allegation. And so after many hearings and deliberations and motions filed here or there, the judge rendered his decision. And the judge said in his order, he says, it is my considered opinion, it is the order of this court, uh, that what, wherever the guilt may lie, wherever it lies, so we know where it lies. And he says, and that is the tavern owner is really the one who believes in prayer because the other said it wasn't their prayer that called the storm. So uh, it doesn't suggest how faithless we can be sometimes, and it does, how faithless we can be sometimes in our prayers. So we must be careful as we go forth that we walk by faith and not by sight and, uh, and believe that God is, he's the rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Uh, and this is, this is Paul's prayer. This is his prayer for enlightenment. This is Paul's prayer for enlightenment as we prepare now to move into the next chapter. We ask that you will study uh, ahead. And uh, also I would be remiss if I didn't remind you uh, to be sure to get your shots. Those who have not uh, taken your shots, uh, those who have not been vaccinated, we know of cases uh, where others have not been uh, vaccinated and then uh, got COVID and actually uh, died. So uh, our national president has asked us to uh, to really to get the word out, to encourage our members uh, and friends uh, across the country and locally to be sure to get this shot. And I uh, know many of our members, most of our members have already gotten this shot and also their boosters. So uh, we want to be careful for this uh, virus is highly contagious. Uh, and we just thank you uh, for your time. We are out of time, but we certainly were not out of word. We pray that God will richly bless and keep you uh, is our prayer in these uh, trying and unprecedented times. Uh, we love you and uh, we pray God's blessings upon you. Uh, shall we pray? God our Father, uh, we thank you for this time on sharing. We thank you for these thy people. We thank you for your word. We thank you for those who uh, take the time out to study uh, your word that we may be able to grow and be enlarged uh, because many of us may be the only epistle uh, that others will, will read, the only Bible that others will read. And we just thank you for uh, being God and we thank you for walking with us and enabling us to do your will uh, and to walk circumspectively in these troubled times. We praise you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll see you on next Wednesday if it's God's will. Good night.